Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, we are going to animate the van bot. Um, and let's see, first thing, I want to do a 24 frame walk cycle, so I'm going to give myself 25 frames down here. And then uh, I'm just going to go in and we'll grab the upper body control. And on frame one, let's just drop it down a bit, Boop, down the Y axis, make his knees bent. Okay, I'm going to hit S. I'm going to go to frame 25 and I'm going to hit S and 13 and hit S. And so now I have no animation. Well, there's three keyframes, but there's no real animation. Now I'll go up at 7. And I'll make the legs straight. Okay, and I'm going to go to 19. And I'm going to go up as well. If I wanted to be exactly the same as 7, if I middle click drag along the timeline and go to 19 and then I hit S, it'll be identical. It's almost like a copy paste function. I get this. Okay, and then uh, what I'm going to do is um, let's go and start playing with the feet. Okay, so I'm going to take the feet and at frame one, we'll pull these ahead. Okay, something like this. And I'm going to hit S. Uh, I'm going to go to frame 25. I'm going to hit S so they're the same at the front and the back. And now when I go to 13, Okay, I'm going to pull them back, and I don't pop the IK handles, just pull them back, something like this, great. Um, and now I can check it, check the animation, this is what I should have. Okay, now I'll go to frame 19, um, and this is when the feet are coming forward, so I'm going to pull this up in the air, and, oh, I keyframed it too quick. I'll go and I'll do something like this, and I'll rotate it, and then I'll press S, and I'll check out this. Okay, so I got this going. Okay, great. And now when I go to about frame 23, kick the feet up, and I'll pull them straight forward-ish. And I'll hit S. And now when I press play, I got this kind of, looks like a strange kind of a hop. Okay, but this is your stride here. And now I'm just going to stop this, and I'm going to go into the graph editor. Animation graph editor. And, uh... In the graph editor, I can see my animation, see my values on the side and time along the top. I'm just going to go into view. I'm going to turn on infinity. And so now I can see infinity. I'm going to grab all the keyframes. So I just box select over them. And I'll go to curves, post infinity, cycle. Okay. And I'm just going to move the time slider to about frame 13. Okay. This is it's nice and visual when I'm doing this. If I go to 13. And I'm just going to make sure I select one foot. In this case, I always select the right one. Okay, and if I grab my curves, oh, and I did a box select over this, or if you're trying to drag across your curves, they don't select now in 2017. you got to hold down M and drag across the curves to get all the curves selected. Okay, and if I have the move tool on over here, if I hold down Shift and I middle click and go side, and there I just matched up with the last keyframe, and if I press play, I should see walking. Okay, so I've got this done in about three minutes. Okay, I got the basic walk cycle. Now, I gotta start putting in some kind of overlapping type stuff. And so, I wanna go and make sure that the character's spine is kind of loose. Okay, uh, maybe before I start getting into the spine, I should also acknowledge that, uh, here, let's do this. Let's go. Actually, that one's good. And then this one here, just hit F. Okay. Um, I'll just go in here, and I'm going to grab the uh, the center, or the upper body control, sorry. And I'm going to go to, say, frame 7, and you'll see that he's straight up in the air here. This is kind of wrong. So the weight should be over here. And I might even, in my case here, if I hold down X, I can snap it to the grid, so it'll be exact. And I'll just hit S and keyframe that. I'm going to go frame 19, and it should be the opposite over here. And so I'm going to hold down X, and I'll go over there, and I'll hit S. And I'll just kind of take a look at that animation now. Okay. <clears throat> so now his torso is going side to side. This looks a little bit better. Your, your weight does shift over pretty quick, though, really, here when the weight is shifting over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the graph editor. I should put that graph editor on my shelf. And if I go to Animation Editor's Graph Editor, and I've got a Control Shift held down. Now it just pops up on my shelf. Um, and if I want to take a look here at my uh, Translate X, there's my animation curve. And if I select these uh, Bezier handles, I can kind of 
give it a little bit more of an arc. Okay. Something like this. Maybe take this one. And all I'm doing, uh, middle clicking and dragging around. Okay, and then this one here should also have a bit of an arc to it. Okay, something like that. And then I'll just take a look and it'll... And remember, if this is too much, you can grab your whole curve. And if you uh, grab all the keyframes on here, I'll stop that. I'm going to check that out and see if that worked. Drag over them all. If I got my scale tool on, I kind of go around the zero mark here, and I just kind of click and I drag down. And I can squish the animation so it isn't so extreme, isn't so noticeable. Okay, and there we go. So now it doesn't move quite as far side to side. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, what else can I do? Um, now, I can start to take a look at my hips. And with my hips, um, if I go and I get the rotate tool, we know this hip, uh, or this foot, where am I? I'm on 13. Let's go to 1. So, right now, my foot, he this foot here has kind of come down. I'm going to go and tilt the hip something like this. And let's give that, I don't know what, I'll say 15 degrees, negative 15. Okay, and then I give that negative 15 degrees and I keyframe it. I'll hit S and I'll hit S here and 13. Okay, we'll see what happens when I go and I keyframe this one when it goes to 15 degrees. And I hate that. Okay, great. One five. And then I'll hit S. I, sometimes when you click over in here to try to change the number to type it in, you notice you get the slider thing, and yeah, I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> and uh, and if I that's new. Um, okay, so now I got my hips going side to side. You can also tell that uh, when I do this, the hips at about frame three, the weight goes to this hip. So that means I should be getting something like this happening. So it should crack the other way. Okay, and let's go and just give that, say, 10. And I'll hit S. And then I'll go over here, 13, we'll go to 15. And that should also, we'll give that a negative 10. Okay, and I'll just press play. Okay. And again, if this is too extreme, we can always settle it down using the scale trick in the graph editor. Um, I should also take a look, and if I'm looking from this frame here, <clears throat> my y-axis should be rotating. I'll give that maybe 15 degrees here. Okay, it should be rotating into the leg here, so I'm going to hit S. And I'll make sure this is exactly the same on the other end. If I middle click, I just go here to 25 and I middle click, it'll pop over and nothing will move. Then I can hit S and keyframe it and it does like a copy paste function almost. And then I'm going to go to 13 and I'm going to go and check my Y axis. And I'll just kind of make it exact. I always tend to like the numbers being a bit dirty so they're not, they don't match exactly and that way it, it looks a bit more, uh, natural but whatever I'm making it robotic and there we go so now we got this happening okay and a little bit of attitude in that strut um, I can take those keys here these uh, curves and if I hold down M while I do this it's another thing I don't like um, I could just go and grab the scale tool scale it down so it's a bit more subtle okay I'll just bring this up. <clears throat> okay, and I'll stop this. So now we got this part done. Now we're going to go into the upper body here. The upper body control, if I go to the first frame, I should note that, um, here I'll look at it in the front view. Okay, hips are going this way. That means the upper body should go this way. Okay, and what have I got? I'll make that say 10 degrees. S, 25 should be the same, 13, we should go the other way, okay, actually I'm just noticing if I hold down J, um, J, if I put on my, whenever I hold down J here, it, it puts on the absolute here and it's stuck to 15 degrees, I go to the absolute and I change the 15 to say 5, I like that better, I'll just turn that off, 
And now you see when I hold down uh, J and I rotate, I can get this to snap to 15 degree increments. There, and that's a little bit better. Um, and then I go here to frame three, and then I notice that uh, it needs to go the other way. So do something like this. Come on, right there. Okay, S. And then I'll do the same thing. A couple frames after this, when the hips crack, that means the shoulders have to crack too. And what did I do? I did something like that on the other one. Okay, great. S. And so now I can take a look at this. Okay. And that's pretty good. Let's just take a look as well to the front here. So if I go to the, uh, the <clears throat> first frame, and this hip here is forward, my left hip is forward, that means my left shoulder should go back. And when it's going back, let's snap to this. Okay, and then when I make sure that's the same on the last frame, I just middle clicked, S. I'm gonna go over here to 13, and if I hold down J when I'm rotating it, the uh, right hip means that the right shoulder, the right hip's forward, the right shoulder should go back, great. Okay, when I press play, a little bit of a tick in this, but it is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, and that just means the tick means I need to really settle that down. So I'm just going to go in here, grab my curves, got my scale tool on, right around the zero mark. If I middle click and drag down, I'm going to make that really subtle. Otherwise it looks just a little bit too John Wayne. Okay, but there it is. Okay. Now, uh, moving into the head, if I go to the front view, um, what I always do with the head is on the first frame, I just notice that the head is usually kind of lined up with the, uh, with the, the hips. So I usually kind of move it and tilt it slightly towards the hips. Okay, now make sure the last frame's the same, 13. And I always just kind of aim the head towards the camera. I know I could think about this a bit more, but that's, that's what I do. Okay, and then I gotta check out frame three, and then I know that I've got this problem here, so I gotta go and tilt it back because the hips cracked at this point. And I just keep it really subtle. In this case, I'm keeping it subtle. A lot of times I exaggerate all this stuff and then always settle down the curves, but that should work there. Okay. And again, if that's too much, when you go to the perspective view, it seems a little bit much, I could squash that down. Okay, now I'm gonna give each one of the arms a bit of a workout. Um, I got these clavicle controls and on frame one I'm just gonna rotate this back actually and when I do this it's actually just faster than typing in values so I go to 10 and uh, if I take that 10 I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit oh and I'll take this up say five degrees up this way there so it's gonna go up it's gonna go back and it's gonna go up okay this leg is forward this arm is gonna go back 25, the same, 13, we'll take this and we'll go forward, and I'm having some gimbally issues here, and it's because of my rotational order, uh, because Z is last, and if I go and I move it along here, well, I'll just fudge it for now. Okay, because I don't want to explain all this stuff. Um, boop, 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 there. <clears throat> and I'll also make sure that it kind of goes up as well. And make that... Uh, is that going to move for me, this stupid slider? I hate that slider thing. Negative 5. I'll hit S. Maybe I'll just take that out. Boop. See what happens. S. And I'll press play. And now my arm is going back and forth. Okay, cool. And it's kind of a little bit up. What I'm going to do is on frame 7, I'm going to bring this down here so it kind of hangs down. And I'll do the same thing in 19. If I hold down J, just bring it down a bit. And just kind of a subtle movement in the shoulders. Okay, going back and forth, and they're kind of going up and down a little bit. And again, if this is too much, I'll just go in here and I'll grab my keyframes and boop. and if I get my scale tool middle click around zero squish it down and now the movements really subtle but it's there and it's true okay I'm gonna stop that and 
Then I'm going to grab the arms here. And if I bring these down, okay, we're going to know that, um, so this, we're on frame one, <clears throat> one, and my arm is back, something like that, okay. I might just tilt it this way a little bit. Okay, great. And I'm going to hit S, 25, S, 13. We're going to go forward. Whoop. Okay, and I, can, I don't have to do too big of a swing, but I can, I'm doing that. Um, and it's maybe seven. Sometimes I'll check, and yeah, I don't want the arm to go right through the leg here, so I'm going to bring that out a bit. And maybe 19. Probably got the same thing going on, so I'm just going to have it kind of swoop out, so it's going to kind of... Uh, kind of do a kind of a curve around the torso as it's swinging. Okay, and we'll just check that out, make sure it's working. Okay, and that seems to be doing fine. And then I'll go over here and I'm going to grab the elbow. And at frame 1, actually I'm just going to blast a keyframe 1, 13, and 25. And then I'll do something like go to frame 4. And as the arm is going forward, if I go back, whoop, okay, great. I'll do the same thing here. I'll go to frame 17. And this time, as it's going backwards, I'm going to go this direction. So I'm going to go opposite of it. And now it gives a bit of weight to the elbow. Okay. And you can see it's swinging. Okay, great. And maybe I can do something similar to the uh, arm here at frame one. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to rotate this hand over this way so it looks like the hand swinging properly. Okay, great. S, 13S, 25S, and... Then maybe at say frame five, as this is going forward, I can go in and there's a wrist bend control and I can make it go this way. S. And then if I go to 13, I go to 17, 18 maybe. And I'll take that wrist bend and I'll go back this way. S. And let's just check that out. So now I got a little bit of swing in the hand. And again, I could settle down all this animation. But this is a nice kind of little secondary swing in the arms. Then I gotta go do the same thing to the other side. So at frame one, I'm just gonna bring this puppy down, rotate him around. Okay, and that leg is forward. I could take a look and, and check out how far I've rotated these things, uh, make them exact, but again, I'm gonna just try and do this fast. One, 25, then 13. I go backwards with it, S, keyframe it. And at 7, we check it and make sure, eh, that one should be okay. And 19, and I can bring it out a little bit there. And then I'm going to go over, grab the elbow, 1, 13, 25. I'm just setting keyframes in them. Go to frame 4. <clears throat> this is going backwards. Go this way. As the arm is going back, then I make the, the forearm go forward. And as I go here, 17 is the... Arm is coming forward, I make this swing back, and then I get the swing in there. Okay, and then I go over and do the hand, and uh, I'm just going to rotate this thing so it's in a good direction for this. And I'll frame one, keyframe it, 13, keyframe it, 25, keyframe it. And I'll go to another frame after, uh, so I'll do 25 here, do the wrist bend. So it's going back, I get this, and then if I go to 18, I was doing that wrong. Uh, 18. Click on the wrist bend and I middle click so it's going this way. Check it out. Oh my god! And now I'm ready to render it. So I'll stop right around there. Um, yeah, it feels like there's more stuff I could do to this, but this kind of is my basic little walk cycle.